Hello, welcome to Ekideo. My name is Justice Mwaka. I'm your instructor. Today, we will be learning how to design a guard foundation just like this. As you can see right now, this is a five story building which has a five floors. Uh, this is a beam on rat foundation so by the end of this lesson you will be able to learn how to design a rat foundation also if you check on this video you can see that we have a steel rail around which i will also show you in my next video how to design how to create these steel rails but for today is to learn how to design a rat foundation just like this okay so also if you check in my um, on the design status right here you will also see that this structure has perfectly been designed for as you can see it right now all main bars have been designed for and also been checked so in this video you will learn how to design a rough foundation for any kind of concrete building. So looking at this right now, I said this is a rough foundation having a beam and a wrap and a slab, and also having a cantilever slab which is on the bottom to take care of the overboarding pressure from the soil that will hit on this rough foundation. So in this video, I will show you how to do all this right now, and this video will take less than one hour to um, um, teach. So I will say you sit tight and also subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to my channel subscribe so that you don't miss the, my coming videos on how to design your foundations and also buy foundations okay so let's go back to our model view and then so that we can get started for today's lesson which is to design a raft foundation okay so go back right now and then let's begin hello welcome to Ekideo. my name is justice Mwaka. i am your instructor today we will be learning how to design a raft structure in my in my previous video i've been seeing a lot of comments on um how that i should design or i should make a video on how to design a raft foundation so today i'll be showing you how to design a raft foundation using this structure here so looking at this structure this is a um four floors one two three four five five floors which is a five-story building as you can see it here which is also um, a complex one because you can see that it has um, a steel wheel as you can see it here it has a steel wheel at the fourth floor okay but for today's lesson it's not just to show you how to create these steel wheels our lesson of today is how to design a raft foundation using this portal structure and also if you can observe if you are our good subscriber you know that we have changed our logo from what we have before to, to this new logo and also i will say that if you have not subscribed to my channel ekidel i will say that you should subscribe to my channel ekidel so that you don't miss more of our video um that that, that uh, we are going to do in our coming videos okay so also looking at this right now so this structure has already been designed if you go if you go to our design status right here and then go to our design status you can see that this structure has perfectly been designed for even the steel members and also the concrete members has been designed for as we know that green means that your structure is okay so um, if you want to know how to design this structure from the start to the beginning i will say that you um subscribe to my channel because in my in my previous in my coming video i will be making a complete video on how to design this kind of structure from start to finish but for but for today's lesson we will only be designing for a raft foundation Okay, so let's go back to our model um, view to get started. So go back to this place and go to and click on none and go to um, our plan view and click on plan. Okay, right now to begin your raft foundation, we are going to click on story zero zero just as it is right here. Okay, so now the kind of raft foundation that we want to do is a raft on beam foundation. So we will be using a beam raft and then we will now use a concrete slab um, above the beam. So right now, to begin our rough foundation, the first thing we'll do right now is to click on our concrete beam because we want to um, um, do a beam raft. In my coming video, I'll also do um, a rough foundation with just slab. But for this lesson, we'll be doing beam raft foundation. Okay, so we click on, con on concrete member and then click on concrete beam. In a lot of us, we're going to appear where we'll set our width of beam and our depth of beam. So I want to use my width of beam for, for the rough beam to be two, 50 or let me say 225 millimeter and then also i want to use my depth of beam to be 6 750 so i use my width of beam 225 and my depth of beam 750 this depth of beam is just a default because when we design this this raft foundation if this depth of beam is not sufficient then we will not have to change the depth of the beam to a higher depth so we now click on this place to insert our beam and we have successfully inserted our first beam, as you can see it here, FB1, which means foundation beam 1, 225 by 
225 by 750 millimeter. So we have to now click to insert um, to, to connect the whole columns with the raft beam. So click on this place to, uh, to insert all our ground beams. So we have to click on this place and then click on this place. Like I said before, if you have not subscribed to my channel, I will say that you should click on the subscribe button and also click on the share button and the like button so that you don't miss our, um, any time we will make a video on other raft foundation or pipe foundation. Okay, so we have um, successfully inserted all the or the ground beam uh, perimeterally, so we will now have to insert the internal beams. So click on this case to insert the internal beams. You can see how I'm inserting the internal beams right now. Then also we also click on this place to insert all these ones. Also, we we'll click on this place and then on this place, and then we now have to insert the horizontal internal beams, which we now click and begin to insert and begin to insert here and also insert here and then click, to, click on escape. Click on this point and also insert. Sorry. Click on this place and also insert here and then insert this and insert this. Okay, so now we have successfully inserted all our rag beam, which is the ground beam. So we now click on escape. If we check on our 3D view right now to see what we have achieved right now, you can see that we have successfully created our ground beam, which is the rag beam, as you can see it right now. If I turn off my grid line, you will see how that we have successfully created all the ground beams. Now, the next thing right now is to impute the slab. So we go back to and turn on, on our grid line and go back to our um, plan view right on our plan view right now. So to impute this slab right now, we will have to do a, a small calculation so that we cannot impute this slab because the slab will have to be not not below this um, raft. It will be above just at the tip of this ground beam. So we have to now do a little calculation by clicking on our um, um, calculator and then on doing that right now, knowing that we we want our slab depth to be 200 which is the raft slab to be 200 millimeter depth so knowing that our raft beam is 750 so we will now have to um click on um 750 minus 200 and minus the concrete cover i want to which is um 50 so we'll say minus 50. so we have our height of um the like the height of the slab which is not the depth of the slab to be 500. So I will show you how we will input this 500 right now. So if we click on our um, concrete member and click on slab right now, and then we have to input our depth of slab to be 200, and then put the concrete cover to be 50, and then we go to load. We have already loaded this structure already, but now we have to put the relative level, as you can see it right here. So this level right now is what we just calculated, which is 500, which is the depth of the beam minus the minus the the depth of the slab and minus the concrete cover you can see it right now gives us 500 so we will now have to go to this place relative level and then impute this 500 that we have just um, calculated here so we go and include this level as minus as 500 and then we have to now insert our 3d view to see what we have achieved right now we go and click on 3d view you can see you can view it out okay I think um, it's not okay it should be positive not minus so we go back to our uh, plan view and then click on this slab right click and positive yeah because um, minus means that it's going downward but we want this slab to be at the edge at the top of this beam so we just move that minus sign and, and put it positive sign and say click on updates so if you go right now close on this and then right click on this place and 3d view you can see what we have um, achieved just here you can see that our slab right now is at this top right here Okay, so then we go again back to our plan view to insert all other um, slab right now. We go back right now and then clicking on our um, slab under, under this concrete tab, we have already inserted all the main bucket. Here it still remains 500. And then we begin to um, insert it just now. So click on this and then click on this, click on this, click on this, and just insert all other um, slab as we have it here. So if we go to our 3D view right now to see what we have achieved, Turning off our grid line to see it clearly, you can see what we have achieved just now. We have achieved the raft slab and the raft beam, and which is the ground beam. So right now, the next thing right now to do is to run the foundation analysis. So we go back and click back on our turn on our axis, which is layer, and then go back to um, plan view. First of all, we have to save this because we have just click on save to save all the changes that we have made on this structure. Okay, like I said before, if you have not um, subscribed to my channel, I will say that you should subscribe to my channel and turn on um, your turn on your button so that you will not um, miss our coming videos on how to design a pie foundation, another type of rough foundation, another kind of foundation, which we will be doing the video in our next coming um, videos. 
Okay, so let's just wait for this um, to finish and then we will now begin the um, the foundation design, which is the craft foundation design for this structure. Okay, uh, almost done. Okay, so right now, at this place right now, we will now have to um, click on analysis right here. But at this point, we will be going on FE raft foundation analysis and not bit analysis again. So we'll click on this finite element raft foundation analysis. So we'll click on this point right now. And then we will now have to, first of all, um, check this place. We have to check that include column section in finite element model. We'll click on this. And also we'll check this also use subcharge reaction values assigned to slab for soil stress check. So we'll check this also. And then we'll also check this ap apply life load reduction for all combinations. We'll check this also. Okay, so right now, the next thing we'll do right now is to calculate for, is to click on this raw foundation mesh and uh, analysis. So we'll click on this point right now. Now, this raft foundation now is trying to um, perform the foundation analysis. So let's wait for it to um, round up while we um, wait for it to round up. I will see that issue. Um, subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed to my channel. And also um, share this video to your friends and loved ones so that they can also know how to use Puda Structure to design um, some kind of um, building and structures using Puda Structure. Okay, so right now you can see that right now we have to, once, once this deliver appears, next thing you do is to, um, I would say you should leave this place as default, but if you want, you can you can just reduce here to um, be 500, but I would say that you can leave it as default. It doesn't really mean, so, but the main thing right now to do is to click on Degenerate Mesh and um, this um, generate model. So we click on this right now and wait for the mesh to be generated on this um, raft foundation slab as you can see it here. Okay, so wait for it to finish. Okay, so right now you can see um, that the mesh has been generated which is showing also the, the spring analysis as you can see it right here. Okay, so now we have to now click, once this is done, we have to now click on this close and then wait for um, the post and wait for the post processor um, stage to come up. Just, let's just minimize this stage and then wait for it to come up. Let's just wait. Don't click on anything again. It, the next stage is going to come up, which will now begin the design of um, the rat foundation, which is the slab. We have, have, have to now determine. Um, okay, so right now we have to now impute. Once this stage comes up, you now have to impute your bearing capacity, which is on this case is allowable state of soil. In my own case, yeah, from the from the foundation from the soil report, in my own case, it is 90. So right now I impute my bearing capacity or the allowable uh, soil stress of soil as 90. But in your own case, you have to impute uh, your own bearing capacity or your allowable stress of soil. Now, once you impute this, you leave this um, positive moment factor as the fourth one, and leave this negative moment as the fourth one. The next thing I will do is to click on analysis post processing so we'll click on this point and wait for the next level boss to appear which will now lead us to now to come start designing for the for the for the slab okay so let's wait for it to um come up okay so right now you can see that your column loads is already there on each of the column which is on this column we have um 251.7 kilonewton per just kilonewton which is the axial load and this place we have 376.6 kilonewton and this place we have 645.7 i think the, the highest load that we have here is this is this two which is 645.7 and 620.1 and 6 17.7 okay now the next thing right now you do is to click on your standard contours you have to click on these contours this is the right way so you click on this display standard contours which will now display for you the area of the slab which is heavily loaded and which we need more of the which we need more of the slab reinforcement so right now we will now have to um click on this um moment right now so once you click on this moment the all the all the values will be applied to this mesh and then next thing again you click on this moment at y direction and moment at x and x direction and then next thing again you click on this um we we'll click on this M1 and then after that, we'll click on M2. You must make sure to click on all these points so that you can transfer all the effect to this um, slab. Then also, we have to click on this uh, moment D1 at bottom, a moment D2 at the other direction bottom, and the moment at top, a moment at um, and top also. Then also, next thing right now, to let us maximize this is to also um, click on the um, top, which is here. And then click on this also button and click on this top which is the ax then top which is the area of steel top and bottom so once you have clicked on this right now next thing right now you do is to click on the soil stress this place will tend to take much time if your if your system capacity is not that strong but right now you can see that um, we have already it is already done now you have to now once you click on this soil stress you now have to now zoom up this place right now you can see that the maximum um stress value that we have here is 241 but our soil stress it was uh, our bare capacity was um 90 so we will now have to now begin to check 
and you can see right here the maximum right now we have is one two six this value was gotten because if you multiply your bank capacity which we in my own case was 90 if you times it by 1.4 which is the factor of safety for the um soil stress you can see that we are getting one two six so that was how this value one two six was gotten so any so right now you can see that the maximum stress here of soil, you can see the pressure of soil is 246. So at this point, the, the soil here is very bad that this um, slab depth will not be okay for us at this point. So you can see that right now, if at this point right now, which is the red, you can see that it is showing warning. Just be checking on this place why I move my mouse button on this area. Just be checking on this place. At this place, it is okay. But reaching this point now at the edge here, it is not okay. You can see we are, as I showed me warning, you can see, uh, let me move. You can see, you see where um, they will show me that, yeah, that the soil pressure here is not okay. Let me just um, move to this point a bit. You will see when that uh, warning will not come up. Uh, let me um, move it a bit. And uh, sorry, move it a bit. Okay, so you see that this point right now, you can see that it's showing me warning because the value of the soil pressure is 229.49 three is far, far greater than 126, which is the soil pressure that, that this that, 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 that the load can withstand. So with this now, since we have gotten this error, and knowing that this error is coming directly at all the edges, you can see it right now. This is this, this not equals to GAM, um, provide and GAM provide a slab cantilever, which is on the slab, to take care of this overburden pressure. Because what is causing this um, this failure at this edge is the, is the, is the uh, let me say, is the soil around this place is trying to push back because when this soil, when this structure is being loaded and the load on this foundation is being transferred to the to the soil around this building, the soil tries to push back that effect on this building. So what happens here, this edge of this building begins to suffer that effect. So right now we will have to provide a cantilever slab to be able to spread that load, not directly on the soil, but try to spread the load first on the building, then to, the, then to that cantilever slab, and then, and then gradually transfer it to the soil. So we go back right now and click on close because this our slab um, has failed. So we click on cancel and then click on close. Right now to, to control that effect right now, you can see right, let's go to uh, 3D view again to, to show you what we have just achieved. You can see that. So now to control that effect right now, we have to provide a cantilever slab on all the edges because the edges is having an issue because of when this structure is being loaded, this load on this structure will try to transfer to the soil directly and the and the soil within this area will try to push back the we try to push back that effect on this on this on these um, edges of the building. So with that now it is not it is not causing overburden pressure on all the edges of this um raft foundation. So with that now we, we have to provide a cantilever slab which will now gradually take the load from this from this rough foundation directly on the cantilever slab slowly then now directly onto the soil so we have to now go back to our plan view right now and then we will now have to now start providing the cantilever slab which will now click back on our concrete member and then click on slab here now on this test right now we have to change the type of soil to cantilever which is type 12 i would say if you don't know this cantilever slab check on my um, previous video we have done mini slab on how to insert cantilever slab so right now next thing right now we'll do is to click on cantilever length which is the since the um soil pressure you can see that our main pressure that the soil can withstand is two one is one two six and we are having a value of um two um four five so two four five minus um one two six we are having about 199. Um, so if we times this now by four, you can see that we're having four, um, five, four, seven, six. So we will just approve it to, to 500. So we want the cantilever length to be 500. So we'll now say um, 500 um, millimeter as a cantilever length. So now we'll now begin to insert the cantilever, sorry, not that point, the cantilever from this point, from column to column, we will now insert this place. You say, yes, cancel analysis. So we we'll begin to insert the cantilever you can see what I'm doing right now. This right now will now cause that, sorry, not that point. We cause that overburden pressure to reduce on the edges. So we just um, click on this point and then click on this point. Sorry, delete this. I don't want that point. So click on this point and then click on this point and do this. Okay. So then we'll go also to insert this point and then this point right here. And then we go again to click on the um, this point make sure you click on the exact point which is the column um, center and then we'll click on this place again and then click on this place again okay then we go again to click on this point and then move again to click on this point and take it outside so we go again to do the same for all um this building around the building to reduce the overburden pressure on these building edges 
Okay, so we'll go again to click on this right now and then click on um, this right now and click here. Okay, so we can now click on this right now and then click on this, not this point, sorry. We we'll click on this um, point, sorry, another point. We we'll click on this um, point and then click on this point. Make sure you click on the exact point. Sometimes the cursor will want to take you to another point, so make sure you click directly on that particular point. So click on this point and click outside. Okay, so right now we have successfully inserted all that we have um, here. Okay, so we did a mistake right now. We are we are meant to change the. If you look right now, it is still having a reference value, a reference factor of uh, let me say okay. Okay, zero. So okay, we didn't make a mistake because this your reference fa this your reference factor um that level should always be zero for this kind of reverse lab for this kind of reverse lab. But on this one, you must have a reference um value which we just calculated by the depth of the beam minus is the depth of slab minus the concrete cover. So okay, so we now click on this and then if you go to 3D view right now, this slab must be downward and this one must be upward. Else you didn't get it right. So go and click and to, to see our 3D view right now. Okay, so you can now see what we have, what happened right now. So when this load on this structure hits on this foundation, now instead of the load to 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 now spread on the on the nearby soil directly on this soil directly, it will first of all spread on this cantilever slab, and gradually this cantilever slab now will now spread the load to um to this soil, this soil right now. So with that now, when the soil hits back that effect, because soil must always want to hit back the effect to hit back the effect, which is called active um. Which is called active pressure hit back the effect right now it will not hit on the, on this structure directly it will first of all hit on this um slab and this slab will, we will now have to retain that we now have to retain that that effect and then bounce it back to the soil gradually so with that now it has no effect on our raft foundation so you can see that uh, let me up the grid to, to show you clearly so you can see what we have just achieved right now for um this structure so then right now we'll go back to our plan view on back our grid line go back to our plan view right now click on this place plan view and then right now we have to cut then we have to now um cut this lab strip first on lab foundation before you design you have to cut this lab strip why on the main um floor or other floors you have to um cut this lab strip detail after your film and but for the but for us it is a different case altogether you have to first for cut this lab strip so that it not design this lab strip based on what you have um 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 cuts so we now have to um click on um we have to click on um okay slab strip should be found here okay so on um, concrete cover and then click on slab strip on this place right now we have to now choose the type of slab since we are designing for um a rough foundation this is always a finite element so we'll click on slab type and then click on fe strip so click on fe, FE strip and then knowing that we have a can't lever here and can't lever here like i said before i've already done a lot of video on, on how to on how to detail um slab rightly on product structure so if you have not if you don't know that i'll see that you um subscribe to my video so that you don't miss that and also check most of my videos uh, i'll also add the link right here right down below right down below the on, on this video so that you can also watch that so right now right now since we have a can't lever at this point and at this point also so we'll click on this which is um which is called a can't lever point this place we we'll click on this place and then click on um this place let me see you have to see it here before you click but this is always a can't lever point and this um a can't lever point okay so this is can't lever and this is can't lever why this is um this is um it, this is its continuous end and the why this is a continuous end this continuous end and can't leave an end so since we have can't leave as our start at our starting point and at the ending point as you can see here at start and end we have can't leave her. so i click on these two so right now one is to cut this um is to detail this slab right now so i have to now click directly um just after just after the slab not too far i click on that point and then hold my control key to, to make the line straight else you have to, you, you won't get it right so i hold my control key to make the line straight so i click directly again on this point okay so next thing right now and you can see i'm on x direction so i'm dealing on x direction so next thing i click on this part again and click, click that foundation is um, really a boring one but how's that issue um just hold on because this is the only way to um do this lab detailing which is the okay hold my control key and click on the point again then again go to the next one again click on this point hold my control key and click on this point again okay so now we have um, done um cutting the slab strip which is the slab detailing on the x direction i have not changed the, the direction to y direction still on cantilever and cantilever end so i have not click again on this point on this point just put that after the slab then go again down hold my control key to make the line straight and click again on this point okay we have um done our first um y section and then we click again on this point again just directly after the cantilever or the slab 
and then go below again holding control key down and click again on this point okay you go again to um just nearer and click and then go again downward again and hold my control key downward and then click on this point. okay so right now i will not click on escape you are not going to see your reinforcement for the slab uh, foundation right now until you are done with the design so right now let us go to go and do the proper design right now so go again and click on our analysis right now and click on finite elements graph foundation analysis and then we we'll click on um this mesh having known that you must check all this click on this um graph foundation mesh analysis and then click on yes replace because we are trying to replace that mesh that was already generated okay so let's wait for the next okay so right now you now click on generate model okay so we now um wait for the plate element to be inserted on this lab okay it's almost done we are almost done okay so this is it right now you can see the spring analysis right now you can see the column and the spring analysis you can see the spring analysis so next one i do not, right now is to click on this point okay so let's after once you click on that close button you have to wait for the next dialogue to appear because it must appear for you to enter this stage so you wait don't click anything again you just wait for it to come out okay so um let's just hold on for this stage to come up if you have not yet subscribed i would advise if you um subscribe my channel so that you miss our coming video okay again we now have to impute our um bearing capacity which on this case is called allowable stress of soil so in my own case here for my bearing capacity um soil report it is 90 kilometers per meter square you leave this factor moment factor at z at one and this as one then we now have to now click on this point again which is the analysis post um, processing so you wait again for the net dollar boss to appear and then why it is being uh, why it is still loading i would say you should check on my videos also to know how to design other kind of foundations and also um structures okay right now you can see that we have come back to the same stage that we are before which we have already explained it before so the next thing you do right now is to click on this um go back to general gen general okay results and then click on this contour this first one here and then you can now zoom it out and then you now have to now click on this moment to load all the all the values of these parameters into this um, slab mesh showing here so click again on this point again and click again on this point and then again on this point just begin to click to load all these effects until we get to um the soil pressure area we need to load this and then load this and then load this and then in my next video i will um, explain to you what this really means although it doesn't really mean but as an um, as a software designer and also uh, as, a, as a as a as a software engineer you're meant to know all these ones so but the main thing right now is to first design this uh, foundation before you can now know what all this really means okay so right now we now have to now click on this soil pressure don't click on this last soil pressure threshold we don't we don't need it so just click on this first soil pressure and then we now move you can see that our soil pressure right now has now reduced to one one um one one four point four which means that it is perfectly okay because our uh, uh, because right now you can see that that the required soil pressure for this structure to carry this load is one two six and the maximum soil pressure we have based on this load is one one four point four so you can see that it is okay and you can see that the that the that the most critical soil pressure is the one that is showing um this red same sign here which with the value is one one four point four against our our main soil pressure that that, that that this structure needs to withstand the load is one two um one two six how do you get this one two six let me show you again one to six is gotten by the by the bearing capacity which is 90 in, in one case multiplied by 1.4 this 1.4 is a factor that you must need for for foundation and if you time if you say first you can get one to six and see it here so this is the factor of safety for any kind of foundation except yeah for any kind of foundation both for pie for pads for strip and for rafts so this is um the factor of safety which gives you the the main soil pressure that can withstand the load of a structure so for this case it is, it is one to six which you can see it also here one to six and if you check our um our soil pressure based on our load for this structure is one one four so since this value is more than this is is, is a less than this required value that that we have already provided based on the soil um bearing capacity which is one to six so it is okay so everywhere is okay so even if we zoom at this place right now and then um, click and just pass the button around this place you can see that it is showing okay because this point is um one is 99.641 which is less than the 
than than the provided um soil pressure which is one to six so with this point right now everything is okay you can see it right now everything is okay so with this right now you cannot click on this close and once you click on that close it will now require it to transfer the slab strip to find finite element analysis result you say yes just say okay and then you wait for it to transfer although it takes quite some time if if you don't have a path system that can um, read model very well although i'll just say you should just hold on for a while why it begins to transfer the slab strip one after the other right now you can see it right now that it's been transferring the first which is strip one which is this now strip two have entered so it will transfer it one after the other the strip three then strip y4 y3 y4 and y5 so right now we are still on s2 so you just hold on right now we have entered s3 so just hold on for it to um transfer the slab strip result up to y5 um, then it will now have to um close down this um dialog box by itself and then show you back your model so let's just hold on for this stage to um complete so that we can now move on to the next stage right now once this stage is being completed automatically you, you will just update your um you just update your model and your reinforcement for the raft slab will just show immediately so like i said before if you have not please um subscribe to my channel i will say that you should do that just now so you don't miss our coming video okay now, right now we are almost done so right now next thing to do right now is, is to transfer foundation being report you can see right now transfer foundation being result so you click on this transfer immediately to transfer that you can see the foundation being finite element result are transferred so now click on close so with this now just come on right here right click and say um go to this arrange or steel bar and then click on update steel bar so you can just see once you click on that update you can see that your slab tree will just appear immediately so you can see how our slab tree have just appeared right now so the next thing right now we'll do right now is to um now go and design our beams so because this beam is not yet designed we just designed for the raft for the raft slab so we're now going to design this ground beam which is our main business for today so we now click on um we now click on concrete design we now go to concrete design um, beam reinforcement design and then click on foundation beams so once you click on this right now next thing we can see that all the beams are failing because we have not yet designed for the for this um foundation beam next thing we do right now is to click on settings to set the the kind of parameters we need for this foundation now the setting right now says that you have to put a concrete cover this first is going to be by 35 and the beam bottom edge 50 and this should be 35 you have to set these values else the beam will not be able to design and then you go again to parameters and then and um, click on the minimum reinforcement for the beam as y16 which is diameter 16 and click on the maximum as diameter um 20. okay then again we're going to click on the um, for the for the lens, just click on um, 10 and then click on save and then say OK. OK, so next again right now, we'll do right now is to now um, move on to design a batch mode. You can see that pin design batch mode. So once you set those values, just click on pin design batch mode. OK, so you cannot click on. Uh, yes, we select the bar, click on this place and select new steel when previous bar are insufficient. So you click on this and say um, calculate. So you wait for it to uh, round up. Once it's failing, it should it, it not be designed. You can see that right now all the beams have been designed. But even at that, like I told you before, you have to check your beam once and the other to see the kind of enforcement that the that they design that this software used to design your raft foundation. So at this point, right now that we are our foundation beams, which is the raft beam, have been designed. We have not checked the foundation beam one after the other. So we'll click on this place right now. Don't click on it to check the kind of um, steel reinforcement that this um, um software used to pass it. So right now you can see that it's taking um two top two diameter sixteen top and two done so on this case right now this is the sidebar and this okay so right now i have to now um i want to use three not two as i'll just put all the top as three i don't want two because this is the foundation stage so i put this also at um two and at two then also reduce this to 16 and then uh, i'll just i'll just remove this value right now and then try to lap this reinforcement into this column here so i'll click on this place on this and say lap and then click on this place again and say lap that's what i'm doing and then click on this button and say lap so if i go and just update and come down again to three you can see that it has um past design which you can, can you can also see the area of steel that they are okay you can see the area of steel here is okay and also the links are also okay so the same thing goes here i remove this right now I, I don't need this um support button bar which is the layer of reinforcement i don't want this so next thing i'll do is to lap this reinforcement into this into this um column to be able to design to be to, to be able to to be able to reinforce this um this column area so next thing i'll do is to click on this layer and say lap and then i'll say lap then i'll just increase this and then decrease it again so you can now see that this is okay so i'll click on okay 
Next again, we'll check on this beam again. So check our beam, what for the other slave. And you can be able to give authority to the graph, to the to the software how you want your reinforcement to, to behave. So this case, I want it to give me three and not two. I want three top and three down. So I want three here and then three here and then three here. I don't want any support button reinforcement. I don't want any second layer of reinforcement. So I remove that and remove that. You can see that it's failing. So I have to now lap this reinforcement into this column and into this column. So I click on this space and say, click on this one and say lap. And I'll say I'll just increase this a bit and decrease it again. And then I'll click on here and say lap both left and right. And then I decrease, increase this and decrease it again to three. And then you click here and say lap into this place and lap into this place. You can see that. Then increase this again and decrease. So you can see that they are all passing. And I click on OK. And then I go again to click on the next. How you can see I'm taking stress to check my beams one for the other. So that's what you're gonna do. Don't just assume that everything is okay because you can you can have seen that um everywhere is showing um good. No, you check your um, kind of reinforcement that, that the software gave you for the design, which is a good practice for every structural or civil engineer to do. So again, go to this and I'll say give me three and then lap this into the column and then increase this again, lap this into the column, left and right. Okay, you can see what's happening here. So I hear and say um lap this into the column and then increase this okay so these are all okay so i can click on okay now again i check this again one other again you can see what i'm doing right now i also increase this and then increase this and then increase this and decrease remove this support bottom bar i don't want any second layer of reinforcement i just want trade top and trade down and also i also increase this button first of all lap it first and then increase this to three click here and say lap left and lap right and then increase this and also click on this button and say extend lap to left and extend lap to right and also increase this to three you can see that they are all okay the area of influence also is also okay so i cannot click on okay so right now again i go to the next again if you have a thought being just check them one or the other take the stress to check it don't just um be in a haste so that you will not gonna collapse a building so again, I click again and remove this support reinforcement. I don't want it. And then lap this into the reinforcement and then increase my number of reinforcement number. Now, in this case, like three is not sufficient. You can see that three is not okay. So I'll have to make, make it four. So four now is sufficient. Click okay. And then I'll click on this and then lap to the reinforcement and lap this into the reinforcement. And I'll click on in increase to, um, okay, here three is okay. But I'll just make it four to take all four down. And then lap this into the reinforcement and then increase this so four also now okay now remove this this support reinforcement remove this also I don't, I don't want that so you cannot see that now you can see that this space is showing red i've already explained to you what this area means this area means the size of the size of gravel which is size of granite or size of chipping so you know that the size of the maximum size of chipping or size of granite is 20. so when this value is lower than is lower than 20 that means that your granite cannot be able to pass through the reinforcement when they are doing the casting of this beam so since this value is more than 20 because this value simply means the simply means the spacing between between simply means the spacing between each reinforcement so this value here means the spacing between two reinforcement so since they are more than 20 millimeter so it is okay because um because a chipping or 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 a gravel can pass through that space. I have already done a lot of video on this place, so I will say that you should watch my previous video to, to understand what uh, how to address this kind of area. So with this right now, it is perfectly okay. So I click on OK, and then I'm going to click on the next one again, and then do the same practice again. You can see how I'm taking a lot of time to do this, which is perfectly okay. You don't just rush and just continue. And just, just because everywhere has showed um good here, it just says okay, no, it's not okay. So I get um we are minimize and we remove these values and then um lap this into the column and lap this into the column left and right, lap this and then increase this value to um three and increase it to three, which to this place is not okay because the, the this this area of reinforcement is very low, so I'll now increase to four, and then this place also is also failing and increase to four, so four is not sufficient. And also lap this into the um into the column and then increase it to three, which is not okay. You can see 0.93, um, which is the area of reinforcement is very slow. Any slight um mistake in let me say in construction, that means this area will collapse, we will we, we fail. So I'll make it to four to increase the area of reinforcement on this area, which also this palace is also more than 20 millimeter, which is the size of aggregate. To me, it is okay, or chipping is okay. So it's now click on this place and then okay. And then again, click on this one to also check this. 
like I do before, check your beam one for the other. Don't just assume that because it has shown um, design okay, because this place has shown design okay, it just says okay, no. Okay, so it increase again to um, three, which is okay, and then increase to three on the top, and then remove the support um, button reinforcement, remove this also, and then and lap this into the reinforcement, lap this into the reinforcement left and right, and then also do this descent thing left and right before you can begin to increase your number of reinforcements. In case of three, three is not okay because you can see the area of reinforcement here is 594.9603.19 and this is 14, which is not okay. I don't I don't allow this, so I am not increased for this beam to be three top and four button. You can I see that the area of reinforcement have, have increased to 215, which is uh, okay. And then I'll also click on this to increase this. And you can see that three is failing on this area, it's not sufficient. I'll not increase this to four. So four is also okay, okay. You can see that it's okay right now. Then also you yeah, are increased to three. Three will be three is not okay, so increase to four. So right now we have for this being four and three number of white system done and four number of white system button. So I'll click on this place and say okay. So again on this place again, I'll have also in, in check this again to also check um this right now, and I also have to now um do this right now, reduce this to them to 16, also increase to number of three and increase to number of three. Then remove my support reinforcement here for button and what i'll do right now is to increase this value to um three which is failing i'll make it four which is which will be okay now this also will be um four because 12 is too small for the area of reinforcement i'll normally i'll just make it four and then here also increase the three three will not be okay for the three i'll make it four at least let your area of reinforcement here should be at least more than 100 um 100 uh 100 millimeter square so i'm gonna click on this is already okay. I've already extended here a lot for you guys, but I'm not click on what okay. So right now we have checked all our beam. Next thing I'm do right now is to um, um is to create or uh, to extract our design reports. So I'll have to now click on this on the design report right now to create my beam design report right now. So I'll click on that point right now. And then right now I want this comes up right now, which just takes more, which just takes a little time. So um, let's just wait on for this stage to for this dialog box to appear. Like I said before, if you have not still subscribed to my channel, Ekidel, do that just now so that you don't miss our coming videos on how to design more of Raft Foundation. Because in my next video, I'll be explaining more on this Raft Foundation. This is just an introduction to Raft Foundation. I will do more on this video on Raft Foundation to on how to design different kind of Raft Foundation. This is just um, an introduction to Raft Foundation. So um, I'll be doing more of Raft Foundation because I've seen in the comment that people really need um, Raft Foundation design. So um, why not? Why is this wasting more time? Let me see what's happening. Taking more time, okay. This is right now, okay. So, right now we have to now print um, the print bin load. So, just leave this as default and just say okay. So, right now, wait for the next dialog box to appear. Right now, I can see that this value here will start reading. If you didn't read, that means your system is very fast, that's why you, you, you didn't see it to read. So, let's just hold on for the dialog box to appear. I don't know why it's wasting more time, okay. We'll just hold on for it to appear right now. It's okay, it's about to appear for to produce the calculation sheet for the beams. Okay, like I said before, if you have not subscribed to my channel, Ekidel, make sure you do that just now. And also click on the like button and share button to share this video. And also turn on your video notification so you don't miss a coming video on how to design for a Pi Foundation and for other critical RAF Foundation. Okay, right now you can see that um, this is the foundation beam reinforcement design. You can see right now, you can see that the design is perfectly okay. You can see that this is already ticking. This 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 design checks, you can see it here that the um, this is for deflection L over the 5.85 um, less than or less than 558.0, which is far, far away. There will be no deflection on this beam at all at all. So let's go again. You can see that the number of reinforcement at top is three and bottom is three on all other on all the spams so we can check and see other um, um beams for the design reports so once you have um started this you can see the number of pages one over one page of eight so we have number of eight um pages eight number of errors on this design which is zero you can see that there is no error number of warnings there is no warning so if your design is not okay you will also see it here so right now you you can also um, export this design report right now to either to export it to um pdf format or Microsoft. So if I click on PDF format right now, it will prompt me to a place where I want to save. I will have to now choose to just save it. I will. So I can change this file name to Foundation. Let me use Capital Data to Foundation. On um, Foundation, um, Beam Reports, Beam Reports. We are almost done with this um, um, teaching for today. So just click on Save. So you can now see that we have started this um, design report. So can I click once it is done? Just click on um, Close. Okay. So it is done. Can I click on Close right now and then? Click 
very close and then click on this close so right now if you go right now to go and check on our 3d view right here 3d view right here okay i think it's trying to open up that uh, foundation um this thing that was extracted which is already which is also here you can see that we have now extended this we have just um I started this foundation design report which is here you can see them right here so just click on close now if you go and check this our uh, design status right now on this interrogation and go to our design status right now you can see that we have a um, design for this since we have tampered the, the design report that is showing you know that this design has expired but before i showed before the year was okay now the foundation that we designed right now is now showing um okay you can see them right here they are all showing green so this is how to design a raft foundation okay let's go back to our um plan our model view right now and then go back to our plan view so you can now see let me turn on the indication the grid line so you can see how we have designed this uh, foundation perfectly for this building so i will also be making more videos on how to design more critical uh, foundation in my coming videos so if you have not yet subscribed i will say that you do that just now so you don't miss my coming video on other kind of rough foundation steel foundation and a pie foundation which is more uh, mostly important for um all structural engineers or civil engineers to know so you can see how we have designed for this um rough foundation just now you can see that very perfect so right now if you have any comments make sure you drop it below and i'll answer you perfectly and if you think you don't understand anywhere on this video what that what, what i've killing or the kind of um, values i've killing you just drop it down below in my comments or you can also um go to my about and then you can you also see my whatsapp um number or my email and email me your questions and also use my whatsapp um and um, uh, my whatsapp number to email me your questions it is all a app I have already allowed that for you to do that so i also see that you should also um, comment on the on this video if you think um we are reading when we are right so also i will also say that if you have not subscribed subscribe so you don't miss my coming video so next thing right now i'll do is to just save this model so that you don't miss any so that you don't lose anything that you have done so let's try to save and so that you don't miss any part of um all your modeling okay so we have come to the end of this video right now you can see that this video took um this um so that foundation tutorial took us um less than one hour which in my coming video, I'll be doing more critical uh, rough foundation to explain in detail on how to design a rough foundation more. This is just a welcome video on rough foundation, which is perfectly okay for anyone to use for any kind of um, construction for a rough foundation. Now in my coming video, I will explain to you when to when to use a rough foundation, the height of building, the number of stories before you, you cannot change from rough foundation to a pie foundation. I will be doing more videos on how to design this pie foundation and what to prompt you, what to make your decision to choose a rough foundation. So, Right now, subscribe if you have not done that and also share this video to your um, social media platforms and to your friends and family. If you're a student, recommend your colleagues and your classmates to come and also um, learn how to design a rough foundation using product structure. Okay, so thank you for today and then wait, wait for my next video. Thank you for being part of this um, teaching. Thank you and God bless.